So, has anyone here tried cocaine? <laughs> if you've answered no to that question, chances are you're probably wrong. Studies would indicate, since we're in Europe, that most of us here today would have accidentally ingested this drug through knowingly drinking contaminated water. Mm. Now, we're led to believe that contaminated water looks like this, but arguably the worst form of contaminated water looks nothing like it. This is the water that comes out of your taps. It's used to water your crops, it's in your groundwater, in your food, and in almost every consumer product. Whether you're from a first or third world country, getting your drinking water from a tap or from a river, you are being exposed to thousands of invisible contaminants that water treatment plants do not remove. Illicit drugs are not the only thing in this water. They are synthetic hormones, pharmaceuticals, and most importantly, PFAS, known as the forever chemicals. These enter the waterways through multiple types of anthropogenic activities, and apart from the obvious, they in cause increased risk of cancer, decreased fertility, and decreased immunity. Collectively, they're known as contaminants of emerging concern, and essentially, they are the next generation of water chemicals, ones that we don't know much about and don't know how to treat. The problem is actually already a lot worse than we think. Already, 83% of the world's waterways are contaminated with these. In the US, almost all citizens have these chemicals in their blood. Wildlife is not exempt. And out of the 30,000 umbilical cords sampled last year, every single one of them contained PFAS. That means our next generation is already being affected. We desperately need a way to remove these contaminants. But how? So there are. Uh treatment uh, methods available to deal with these emerging contaminants. So the most uh, 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 like uh, available technology is uh, filtration, which removes uh, these pollutants, but does not degrade them. So instead, it generates a lot of solid waste. On the other hand, uh, some of uh, other treatment methods, for example, uh, are available. They, uh, they produce a lot, a lot of uh, byproducts in water, which can harm our uh, environment. However, uh, our research team uh, uh, at Clever Tech, which is uh, located in Dresden, Germany, uh, have developed cavitation-based uh, advanced oxidation treatment process, which can degrade these emerging contaminants. So this is uh, uh, how it looks like, the device. So the treatment process uh, can uh, uh, degrade diverse group of em emerging contaminants into small inactive fragments, which can not harm our uh, water bodies. There are other specialties. For example, it does not generate any solid waste, unlike other processes does. It, it requires less, less treatment time, the process is eco-friendly since it does, not, it does not consume any toxic chemicals. It has the ability to treat about 100 liters per hour, per hour of uh, uh, wastewater. Additionally, it can remove pathogens such as uh, viruses and bacteria. So we have been working with uh, uh, in, uh, industrial partner. For example, Air Liquid is our key industrial partner. We also work with local municipal wastewater treatment plants in Dresden. With all of our uh, efforts and resources, why has not this technology, as well as some of existing waste uh, water treatment uh, techniques, uh, been implemented yet? The answer is policy, or rather lack thereof. Our governments are not protecting us against this. We would think that there'd be regulations in place that govern what's in our tap water and the industries that are polluting it. But at the moment, we're only targeting the industries. And this is an issue. Since these are forever chemicals, even if we stop producing them, the ones that are already in our water will not degrade on their own. In addition, there are over 15,000 types of these emerging contaminants, and the regulations only aim at combating a few of them. And lastly, we're not only targeting these contaminants in Europe or the US. This is very much a global issue that needs to be addressed globally and worldwide. So we do need policy to protect us, but how do we convince our governments of this? Well, key is raising awareness, and that is a, a public um, responsibility. We need the public, you guys, to take to the streets and demand that your right for clean water and food is upheld. 
Secondly and thirdly, science policy communication and maintaining dialogue with experts needs to be done. The public need to understand how complex this issue is. Uh, despite all these challenges, our next-gen team has committed to a uh, strategy um, that we believe will raise awareness and also possibly combat this issue. Yeah, so I don't want to talk about water. I want to talk about a behavior that I'm following, that you guys are following, and the world is following. You know, how we are behaving, you know? We are behaving as if all the problems are gone, and let's fight each other, the wars, Ukraine, you know, the Palestine and everything. But believe me, the real problem is not, uh, we, we, the real problem is the water. And just mark my words, in next eight years, we are, we'll be at a stage of extinction. And the reason will be the resource. And the first resource will be the water. Just go through those 100 pitches. You will see the water at the bottom of every bottom line for everything. Every problem is related to water. So we don't have problem with water. We have problems with water. And my team is trying to solve one of the problems, you know, these upcoming or these emerging pollutants. So yeah, we have a technology, we have a prototype, and we definitely want to scale it up. Because my experience of 15 to 16 years uh, working with the conservation science and the sustainability says you have to, you know, uh, have some kind of benefit, some kind of monetary benefit with your ideas. We definitely want that. But yes, at the same time, we want to democratize the whole process. Because the clean water is, uh, not only the right of Europeans, right? It is the, is, the, is the right of everybody in the world. So we want to take the technology to Africa, to India, to China, everywhere, and make it affordable to everybody. And yeah, at the same time, we work on the policy. And tell me, which state, which government, which county doesn't have a policy or some law for water? We just have to add up this particular thing which we are talking about, right? And how it will go, how it will start? It will start from you. When you will vote for those people you know, who understand these things. When you will ask your people, when you will ask your government to change the policy, and that will be the first drop. That will be the first step that you can take. And, it, uh, and I, I guess it will uh, create that ripple that we are expecting, you know, which, will, which may add some more years for this human species to survive in the, on this earth, right? Uh, so this is one of the scan that you can uh, uh, QR code that you can scan, which through which you can know more about the program that we are dealing with. And yeah, next this is our team, uh, which has uh, which is a diverse team. We have Amit, he's an environmental engineer. Husam, unfortunately, he is not here because of that so-called mental you know thing that we are dealing with the war. He is unable to join us. Shasha, the chemical engineer. And me, I'm part-time marine biologist, and I'm a, I work also as a consultant for sustainability and conservation projects. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs>